Hello. This is my second excursus. This is on Dan Clanton's piece about Jesus in pop culture. And actually, in order to uh, go through the main points in his article, I actually would like to start at the end because uh, his conclusion basically talks about uh, why is Jesus so important in pop culture. Uh, obviously, he's important to people that are religious and have read the story, see Jesus is very important to his life. But he brings up this point about how in pop culture, Jesus is also important to people who are non-believers or atheists and people that poke fun at Jesus. Why is he such an important figure? And as a history major, that is something that I, I don't know if I necessarily have the right answer, but I'd like to pose how I see it as uh, why he's important. And that's part of uh, why this class is so interesting to me. Basically, Jesus was a uh, citizen, or not a citizen of Rome, but he was alive during the Roman Empire, which was the most influential empire at the time, covered a great period of land, and still is influential to this day. And a lot of the government settings and how it led to the formation of other countries and whatnot. And once Christianity became the main religion in Rome, it was part of culture. Jesus himself was right alongside as a key figure in culture. And up until separation of church and state, which was very recent in Europe, Jesus, uh, well, religion in general, was still part of culture. It was a key part of everyday life in Europe. And with having someone like Jesus be basically, in a sense, still alive and a central part of culture for over a thousand years, he's going to still remain important. And there are other historical figures that are common in pop culture. Hitler is, Napoleon is, Gandhi, Caesar. Basically anyone that was big in history could still have an impact in pop culture today. However, I think Jesus is just the most prominent because he's had a direct link to so many different cultures, so many different civilizations, and it's basically something that's unavoidable. So uh, anyway, Dan basically starts the article talking about how uh, talking about how Jesus is received and perceived throughout history, and uh, he's talking about how uh, why is it that Jesus is received so easily, and how is it that he is received? Is obviously the a main source of information on Jesus is through the Gospels, through the Bible, through these texts. And is it the texts themselves that directly offer a solution to who Jesus is, or is it the way that people interpret the texts? And I feel that Dan very much argued about how the texts are uh, often interpreted by the individual, and that is what leads to the different uh, perceptions of Jesus and how different people see him in different light, even if it's from the same stories. And that's why you get different versions of Jesus, such as in the Passion of Christ, uh, he's the suffering Jesus, but then there's also Jesus's divinity, there's his teachings, and there's like, the merciful Jesus and whatnot. And from there, he went into two main ways that Jesus is, uh, described in pop culture. The first of these was uh, through the religious sense, like people that have devotions to Jesus, how he's put in strictly religious movies to get uh, some sort of religious devotion, whether it's converting or just strengthening the people that already believe. He talked about uh, the King of Kings that came out in 1927, and then uh, Mel Gibson's film Passion of the Christ, and how uh, strong those were and how the person was to really strengthen the faith in people. And then uh, what I really related to was his second type of this idea of Jesus in Elseworlds, uh, taking Jesus's character as he was in history and either changing him and uh, creating how he would behave either in a purely fictional sense or just in a more modern today sense. And it talked about how Jesus Christ, a uh, vampire hunter, they took Jesus' character and made him hunt vampires. 
And obviously that would never happen. Vampires don't truly exist. But this idea of what, how would Jesus perceive this? Or how would Jesus perceive lesbians nowadays? Would he be against them? Or would he show them love and compassion? And that was something that I really thought was important. Because the truth is we don't know. People will use text for both sides of the issues. But we won't know how Jesus would perceive today's sexual revolution. And also, uh, I am a huge South Park fan, and I also watch some Family Guy. I have seen a lot of the portrayals of Jesus in pop culture. And I do think that it's important to show him both in a satirical sense and in a uh, kind of a religious or at least more realistic sense because it makes him more real. You're taking someone that is has been prevalent in culture for 2,000 years, but uh, you're changing him to fit how you believe he would be in. And there's going to be some inaccuracies with that, but I think it helps people relate to him better. And uh, I, I know that that's kind of my conclusion I drew. I know Dan's main point was basically just saying that here are some of the ways Jesus is perceived in pop culture. But I, I think that there is some real merit to why Jesus is in pop culture. And uh, as I discussed earlier, the conclusion of why do people uh, relate to Jesus? Why is he such an important figure? And I guess the question that I would like to pose to the class is, where are some of the ways in pop culture that Jesus has touched you? I, I could pull an Emily here and say that uh, when we got to the songs, there's a couple things that I thought of. There's a couple movies I've thought of. I'd be willing to share those in class. And I, I just want to know uh, some of the ways that it's touched your life. Because whether you're religious or not, as this article is clearly brought up, Jesus is a figure that can't really be avoided.